Good evening, good evening. It looks like we are set here in the back of the house. <clears throat> we do have a topic today. I've got a ton of questions. I've got a lot of new subscribers in the last, say, 30 days or so. And I've been flooded with questions on storage as of late. And a lot of questions, more so than usual. Again, I've got a lot of new subscribers that have popped on in the last little while. Uh, we just hit 5 million views just uh, this morning, actually. Um, wife noticed it. I didn't even see it, honestly. But uh, anyway, hopefully everybody is doing well. Now, I've got some storage items that I use for storage sitting next to me. We're going to go through a bunch of storage-related items and comments, questions, and things that I've already got. I do have a few notes here uh, just to address some of the questions that I have got. Um, a few of them came from Patreons as well, so I thought I would address it. Um, let's see who's in-house. Now, I've got a new setup going here on my end. Um, I've been working on this for quite some time um, before we get into it. I'm just going to give you a few updates. So you'll see some different things going on with the feeds shortly. Um, I'm all switched over to the new system. We are running on an auxiliary laptop connected up through um, my primary. So I'm testing to be able to use two... Um, uh, laptops with imported video so I can have guests on without dealing with other stuff. Um, I just found out, uh, for those who have been on some of the live shows, noticed a ton on a couple of them, a ton of um, commercials. It's only on the ones that I do through StreamYard. I've finally figured out what's going on. Apparently, it's something to do with StreamYard. So I am going to try to avoid doing too much here on this channel with anything like that. Again, just for that reason. I got a ton of complaints, including the one I just had with Dom. Good friend. I wouldn't, you know, I'd have him on no matter what. But uh, the, the point is, I had a lot of complaints that people didn't want to watch some of the live shows because of the amount of commercials. If people are getting commercials, a ton of them on this one, give me some kind of count so I can see the difference. I know for sure, though, after testing with StreamYard, that they seem to be getting twice as many if I run a StreamYard versus running straight through here. No idea why, no idea what's going on with that. Uh, Mr. Bizalot, how are you doing? And thank you very kindly for the $10 super chat. I'm sorry, I got two. Actually, I got three laptops open today. I don't see that on this one. But I see it. There it is. Uh, thank you very kindly again, Mr. Buys a lot for the super chat for all the great information. But well, thank you, thank you, thank you very much. Again, not not necessary, but I do honestly appreciate it. Every little bit helps these days. Um, I got the hillbilly hipster. How are you doing? Good name, good name. Um, hipster doofus was always one of those lines I always used to uh, use. Um, it was from Seinfeld, I want to say, or something like that. Hey, Aaron, how you doing, Aaron? Aaron's got his reading glasses on today. It looks like there. Uh, Jimmy, uh, Jiminy, Fl Jiminy flip it. I'm sorry, Marty. That's Marty there. Uh, I think we could all use a little uh, bit of help. Marty has just got a new channel out there. If you get a chance, you might want to pop on in there and check it out. I don't, does it work with the three dots still? Yeah, I think you can still go straight to their channel from here. Um, I have watched a couple of his, he's new. So, um, he's a good guy too. I've talked to him many, 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 many times throughout this uh, endeavor here. My three plus years on there. Uh, Waltson with Crystal. How are you doing this evening? Crystal's L. Walters. I'm sorry. I, I know we've talked. I know you were one of the prize winners. Oh, let me just shoot this out here for, I see quite a few patrons already in here. Um, I'm not going to call any names because I didn't ask the person to, to say anything. The, the record giveaway I did last month. I can tell you right now that one person, I haven't heard in total, it doesn't matter, they can do what they want with them, but one person made, sold 500 and some odd dollars worth out of that box that they got for free out of the contest. I'm going to do another one. So it's going to still be announced this month like I promised. It is one, a little delayed with the, some of the issues medical-wise that I got going on, um, but it will be uh, probably announced the first of the week. It's going to be something majorly easy, and it's going to be voted on um, I think we'll do like a top 10 I'll pick and then we'll, I'll go into it on, on a video for you, but just FYI. Um, it's going to be the same routines, probably some more records, maybe a box of a couple hundred photos. I don't know yet, but it's going to be something good again. It's not junk. Barbara, I almost, I, I, I flubbed up there, but the person who, who did it, she uh, sold 500 and some odd um, dollars worth, as I said. So it's not junk. I'm not giving away junk. Um, I've got hundred. Well, three, four hundred thousand records maybe in inventory right now. And I need to clear out some space because we've got some other endeavor, uh, endeavors going on. Um, 
we've invested in a um, home plastic injection system. So just we're going to be making some figures really soon here. Everything is finally coming together for that project. Just FYI, there's going to be a bunch of videos rolling out on the other channel. Um, and as well, uh, quite a few on the other channel, just FYI. We've been shooting a lot. I just haven't edited any of them. So anyway, let's get on with the topic. I'm going to hop back over to um, uh, people, comments, questions, and things like that, too. I'll call out some more folks in just a few minutes here. The biggest thing that I can say with storage is the size of the item doesn't matter with how you store it. If it's a certain, like, let's say uh, a stamp a postcard, a magazine, a big size magazine like um, Saturday Evening Post or something, or even like posters and stuff. Any of that sort of thing, I store the same way. I just store them in smaller containers versus larger containers. If you're selling clothing, I'm going to show you smaller containers today, but it's, it's the exact same principle. Everything is done the same regardless. You've seen, you know, boxes. The, the thumbnail for this video shows some of my shelving. The size doesn't matter. I store everything the same way. Whether it's a record, an LP, a 45, they're all stored the exact same way, all standing up on it. A postcard, all standing up on the end. Um, die cuts, we'll show you those. Uh, photos, even comic books is pretty much stored the same way, whether they're stood up in long boxes or, or not. Um, magazines, same basic principle. Sheet music, same basic principle. They're all stored in clear... Now, let me stress this out. Clear totes. Don't buy anything with color on the outside. Buy them so you can see inside of them. Anybody telling you to buy solid color ones, don't do it. Don't do it. If you need to distinguish between what they are, get a different lid color. Just swap out the lid colors. You can get them in different colors. There's gray, green, blue, white, and there's a beige one. All of this exact same bin. So everything I get, pretty much, you can get colored lids for them. If you don't get them when you buy the tubs, you can order just colored lids online for a couple bucks a piece. No big deal. So just FYI, do the lid thing. I'll always do the lid thing if you want to distinguish between types. Clear is the best because you can instantly tell from any angle on the box, mostly, what's in it. Now, the most important part is numbering and labeling every single bin that you store something in. Every single thing that you have, you need to uh, label it here. And what, what that does is it tells you what's in there. You'll see people with clothing, maybe A, B, C, D, E, F, G, obviously, until they get more than there is the alphabet. You're going to run out of space like that very easily. We've got like 100 and maybe 30 plus of these style size and everything here storing stuff for right now um massive amounts of shelves so I, I wouldn't even begin to tell you right now we put up a couple more recently um but again everything that we have in here is labeled every shelf is labeled in here as well too so it goes around and rotates in a circle then it goes down the side around the back around another circle around another circle and then back down the hallway over towards the garage so the point of it is though that everything's labeled if i tell somebody to go get a certain bin in there a certain bin like this and they don't know where it's at I can tell them the shelf it's on. And I know them in my head, unfortunately. Um, once you've done this, you've set up the system, you're going to remember where every number is at pretty much. I don't have to say, well, where is it at? And, you know, picking it out. It's just like when you are when you know where your mailbox is at the post office. You go right to it. You don't have to look through a huge amount of things. It's the same way if you set up the system yourself and you label it and everything else. Now, this bin has uh, a numbered paper items. Again, they're paper items in this bin here. F74 through F88. That means that uh, I've got bin numbers, slots, and let's just show you. And this will go for magazines, comic books, sheet music, photos, postcards, stamps, um, coins even. You can even do coins this way. You'll just put, uh, it'll be a different size container. Again, the size of the container isn't what we're talking about. We're talking about the system to label and store everything that you got. The system is what's important. Size, again, I can do this with any size of container. I've got tall items that are in the big tall, oh geez, they're probably about 14 inches tall, I want to say, by about 20 inches across. Again, it would be hard to be pulling out all these bins and showing you. So this is just an example. Now, inside of this, in the 120 or 115, 20, more of these I got just like this, the same size. Every one has a card in the front and behind it is everything that is listed on eBay under that number. So I've got F74. If you go to my store, 
F74 is going to have everything in my hand in it. So if I sell something, all I got to do is go to the shelf that has F74 on it and pull this little tiny stack out. That that's all there is to it. Yeah, it'll take you a couple moments, 20 seconds. Now, some of this is probably not going to show up because green screen, but it's going to only take you a few seconds. Now, we were I was talking with somebody else in, in Patreon, um, I think yesterday, or maybe it was the day before, about, you know, how do you, we're storing and stuff, and what do you do with this, and what do you do with that? And now, I, I don't put more than, say, 30 of each type of item in any one of the bin, bin numbers. So F74 has about 30... Uh, trade cards in here now that doesn't mean i can't put like 30 more items in here that aren't the same size or same type of item <coughs> excuse me so i can double duty the same things i'll just put two different items in here or three different items so i may do uh, non-sports trade cards in the same bin postage stamps and trade cards all at the very same time it's real easy to distinguish which ones are which in here now you can even add and go further from there. I could put in uh, like another file in here to A, B, C or something like that if you really wanted to or something. Um, you wouldn't need to put an A up on here though. You would just put F74. Your listing would have an A or a B. That would be all you would need because all you would need to go is to here and you just have a secondary divider if that's what you want to do. I just, just increase the number. You know, that's all I ever do. Now once in a blue moon you make a mistake and I've got one with probably way too many in here but you know you're on a groove and you're getting a bunch up and you don't pay attention and i do it myself so if somebody messes up here an employee like f80 is probably going to have about 65 items in it i would imagine um again you want to do stuff like that you want to limit the amount of items in a specific bin so when you go to pull it out you're not pulling out some massive stack and having to look through it all that's what we made a mistake on too before we did the whole bin system and set it all up and stuff like that now, I worked in retail as well as, as um, the foods in, industry, in restaurants and in distribution, wholesale. I handled a region, and storage-wise is a major concern. I just leveled my whole business back down to the basics, and I, I do cataloging and uh, inventory-wise, not really inventory, but storage-wise, like I did in foods and retail. Everything has a shelf spot. It's always the same same spot, you know. I, I keep it all in the same same style, same pattern, same containers, same everything. Sometimes you'll see them with different color lids, as I said. That is one way to distinguish them. Or you could change up the number. When we first started, I was doing a lot of postcards before we really got heavy into some of the other items we sell. So I started with the number P. I think we're on like P200 and... I don't know. I don't even know now because I haven't listed card cards. I've listed a bunch of other stuff, but not cards. F we started at shortly afterwards. I've got Z, I got K, I've got A, B, C, D, E, F, G. You know, you name it, we've got multiple ones. You can also use the same numbers on different items. So I can do an F74 that's a small piece of paper that fits in here, and I can have an F74 that's a record because it's in a totally different bin. I'll instantly know by looking at a title, hey, this is a record, I go over here. So you can double duty the same numbers as you're doing this whole setup on here. So don't corner yourself into stuff and thinking, oh, what am I going to do? I run it out of alphabet. I see people do AA and then AA1, AA2. So they'll do... A through like A1 uh, through A100 or something along that line. I don't try to use more than four uh, uh, letter number uh, combinations for any of my, my location numbers. And I do list those in the titles of my eBay listings. Now, I know people say don't give up the space and don't do this. I've never had an issue where I felt it was hindering or hurting me. And the reason I do it because I know there's the custom queue and all that kind of stuff. You can put a, a custom uh, descriptor in there and no one else can see it but you. But it got into be some issues when you have multiple people picking, pulling and shipping items. It, it, it's just more uniform and it's easy. They can see it on my title printout. A sheet prints out and it has every single item's title on it. And all, you know, everything's there. That's all they technically need once they, they realize what they're looking for. And, and that seems to be the case. So, again, there's many different ways to do inventory. But a numbering system like I'm showing you is honestly the best. If you're selling clothing, I had A, B, C, D, E, F, G, uh, H, I, J, J, or H, I, J, K. And then we started with A, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So one whole shelf might be A. 
and then we'll have nine bins on that shelf that were all A. That shelf itself is A, as well as the items that are on the shelf. That's that's the breakdown, and this is the, what a, a, a brick and mortar does. A national company does that. An international company does it. Amazon does the same basic thing. They have bin locator numbers, or, or it's like a little cubicle. I've seen the videos. I've watched some of the ones where they show how it all works there. I've been in big warehouses when I worked as a regional, and I used to order massive amounts of quantity. We get a semi truck load, you know, a couple times a week, uh, and then other trucks as well. So um, we're used to big, high volume, and everything is is that way. You get a pick list if you're a picker packer. Uh, you know, I had to set up the contract, so I got to see all the warehouses. It's one of the cool things about being a regional manager, I guess. And there's not much else cool. Even the salary isn't all that great, but. So paper-wise, I think that should cover paper-wise. Paper-wise, magazines, comic books, records. Uh, I get questions, how do you store records? I have just the same thing, just a bigger bin. The bins that I store LPs in is 14 inches across and 16 inches tall. Um, and you can get a ton of them. You can get them as big as you want, but you're going to have to worry about the weight. So whenever you're setting up an inventory system, you you got to pick out some good shelves. I've got shelves. My shelves can hold, I think, the weight limit on the shelves is like eight or 900 pounds per shelf. And they're wood shelves. They're, um, Metro Max is the name of a shelf maker that's really good shelves. They're really expensive, but they're really good. Um, you want a shelf that, uh, whatever you get, don't buy the cheap ones either for storage. Even if you're only starting off with like small, lighter weight items, eventually you might need some heavier ones. Buy them when you got them. You can buy them in pairs. Most of the shelving units we get, we get off of Amazon um, uh, or Walmart. And they're about the same. It's about $125 for two eight-foot shelves, two eight-foot tall, four foot across. And I think they are three feet deep or somewhere in that range. Yeah, they're three feet deep. Um, but again, measure it out what you're doing. I've got shelves with like uh, one bins, 500 pounds. And that's some of them's buttons, there's books, there's all, all sorts of things like that. I got a stamp shelf that's probably four or 500 pounds of stamp books and, and stamps that we haven't sorted through yet. Everything though has a place, everything has a marked spot. Um, I'm sure anybody who's watched the channel has seen my shelving. You'll see white numbers and letters on every single shelf. We took a, a uh, what's it, like a paint marker and just marked every single shelf with a number all the way down in sequential order on each shelf all the way around the building and down and back and around and back and around and then back out towards the garage. And that's literally what we do with those sorts of things. Now, it doesn't matter. Every Everything that I do is binned up some way. Now, I've just pulled a lady's jewelry. Now, I should have pulled a second one. Did I got a second one here to show you the difference? No, nope, I don't have another one of these. But any ones... Now, this one doesn't say any numbers on the outside. The other ones say N through whatever. Most of my jewelry is an N number. N106, N237, uh, or whatever it may be. Inside of here, this is specifically... I know what it is. I guess I should put something on there. This is just pins. There's just ladies' pins in here. Um... 1940s 50s rhinestone pins maple leaf gold filled gold filled but everything has i don't know this might not show up very well um yeah you're probably not going to see it let's let's show you something else there i'm sorry i should have grabbed something else the point of it is every little bag they're all bagged individually and every bag has a number on it that matches the title of the inventory item as well now I'll show you some other options here. Now, these are just buttons. This is a bag. There's five or six pounds of buttons in here. There's quite a few pounds of buttons. Now, there's a number again on the outside of this. Ah, that's it's terrible. I guess I should have set this up a little differently. Um, but the point is, everything is labeled and marked inside of the bag as well. So there's inside of this B bag, this is B. There'll be a B, uh, B1, B2, B3, B4, B5. Some of them have like... Um, a B5A, B5B. So inside the big bag, B bag, there's 16 little bags that are all numbered 1 through 16. Some of those bags have other bags, again, inside of them. It's a nesting system. So some of the, the smaller bags will have like 
four bags stacked into each other. And each one is labeled differently on eBay. So each one has a corresponding number that matches the bag that it's in. So you dump out the bag real quick, grab the bag you want, and then pull out the one. Inside this bag is around 500 listings. Uh, probably about 400 listings, I would gather. So it's really easy. In about a minute, I can pick out through 500 listings in this bag and figure out which one I want just by numbering it that way. Now that bag sits in a bin, one of the, again, a big version of one of these. And inside that bin's more bags. There's an A bag, uh, B bag, C, C bag, D bag. There's actually two that are a D. I'm on F right now. We've got 2,200, I think, listings up that we've listed since December in the button wise. Now let me do one more thing because this was another big question here. How do you store bigger paper? Um, if you don't have a ton of sheet music, but you, you want to separate it some way, this is a accounting um, accordion is what these are called. I've got a whole bunch of these. These fit in the same totes, the 14 inch wide, 16 inch tall totes that we store LPs in. And we store two of these in one of those. And then we can also stack stuff on top that can easily be removed. Or we can put a another tote on top of it, and it will sit inside of it. So we'll pull, the, pull that top one out, and it's right here with these. But each one of these, this thing weighs probably about 15 pounds. I've got some of these that are full of 20-some-odd pounds worth of paper. Now, in every single one of these... This is accordion number seven. So if you look at any of my listings, you're going to see some that's at the very end of it, the very end of the, the title, you'll see a 7A, 7B, 7C. This is 7A. Anything that has 7A in the title is in this bag inside of this accordion, and it's inside of a big plastic tub. Everything is in plastic. So if some water damage, water drips, the lids uh, cover it so the water will roll off and it won't get in here no matter what. You never know what's going to happen. Everything has been in plastic for years. Everything. Everything is in snap tight plastic covers. Um, and here as well, sometimes there'll be, you know, maybe a, a secondary group inside here. There may be like small cards stuffed in here just so I had a little more space. And then the rest are, are bigger items. Now this is a, a mix of stuff. There's different categories in this bag. It doesn't matter as long as it fits in here. Some of these bins are going to have Christmas cards. There's going to be photos, stamps, um, uh, postal covers, Geez, what else? you name it. If it fits in here, there's labels in here, it goes in here. I don't care what type it is. The, the labels would necessarily go at the bottom of the stack so I could instantly pull them out. Calendars from 1878. I mean, it just depends on what it is. There's even some currency in here. You can store any way you want. The, the point of it is it's pretty easy to do this when you um, have it all numbered like this. Because it doesn't really matter. I can cut my... I know that's terrible. It's not shown very well. It's a shame. But um, the, the point of it is, again, that uh, it doesn't matter what it is you can store them all together so you don't have to have like a separate bin a separate storage file just for photos or just for this some items you can store ganged up in the same bin just because it, it's easier to separate them when you go to find it you, even if there's 30 in here you can instantly tell a large bank note uh, um, like a promotional bank note or something like that and again it gives you all the numbering systems already so i've got seven right here to start with so I've got 7A, 7B, C, D, E, F, G, all the way down through it. It's already labeled it. I just use that number. So 7A is literally a bin location. It's in the title of my listing. And it tells everybody where, you know, here, how to get the item instantly. Again, there's more than just me here. There's more than just the wife and kids. I've got employees. So if you don't have employees and it's just you, whatever's easiest for you. But I would still label and mark it. Now, another reason to mark them like this I have people uh, can't find an item. They've sold something and they can't find it in their inventory. As the title says, it's not just storing. You need to be able to find it when you sell it. And I hear it all the time. I don't know where I put it. I had to refund them. I had to apologize and take days to find an item. If you've got a number in your, your title real easily, you don't have to worry about any <clears throat> other thing. You can go into eBay's your your items, literally, um, what's it, your item page, and you can, or your listings page, 
and you can sort them by date and you can look for that number in there. And if you can't find something, maybe you stuck it somewhere else. So usually the only two or three times I haven't been able to find something, I found it because the number in the title, I can sort through by date and figure out. Of course, you can see the date on the listing. You sold it. You can go and look at when it was listed. That should give you a big help. What I find, and sometimes I may have stuck it in the wrong folder. I may have grabbed a stack or somebody else and they stuck it in the wrong spot. But using those numbers, I can say, well, that same day we listed in bin A, B, uh, and C. So I'll just have those options. I'll instantly know where else I could have possibly stuck it. Every time I've been able to find the item really quickly because of that. Every number obviously is separated. Every item is separated. I, I can use, as I said, I've got B buttons, B cards, I've got B stamps. So it, again, you can use the same numbers over and over again. Don't just keep thinking you got to create new numbers. As long as they're different items stored in a different spot, there's no way to mix them up. I'm not going to be mixing up looking for a uh, you know a record in a button bag, you know. So the the numbers are perfectly fine to be mixed up like that. Hopefully that makes sense. Now with storage wise uh, too, most of the items that are scarce or valuable are protected. I have uh, top loaders. Uh, the little sleeved top loaders for everything, pretty much, if they're valuable. If it's over 50 bucks, in every container I think I have, inside the containers, they're, they're uh, stored properly. So you'll see, uh, let me grab a couple. You'll see stuff like this. It's already separated. This is a lot. It's bagged as well. Um, scarce labels, bagged, you know, sleeved, I guess you would say. I got a habit of saying bagged lots and and i don't necessarily always put every single one in a separate sleeve until it sells so there's like six or eight things in this one the best items out of this bin are in here so if it's over a certain amount i know i need to look in the one that's bagged up that's in the sleeve instantly i can go ahead and pull this out items item was listed for over 50 bucks it's in this one so just rule of thumb. There's a lot of little things you can do that you can build into your inventory system that will allow you to re uh, retrieve your items 10 times faster. Now, it may not sound like a bunch of time, you know, 10 seconds here, two seconds there. But when you're selling hundreds of items, it's going to add up really quickly and you don't want to waste that time. So anything you can do to, to market catalog and everything else. Now, the other question I got a ton of times is on literally inventory. Do I do a physical count of everything that I own? No, I do not. And no, you do not have to legally do one if you don't sell over a certain volume. You can check with the IRS yourself. I recommend anybody not understanding how any of this kind of that part works with inventory, getting an accountant or at least getting the free most around here, including the ones that I've actually talked to and the ones that I've hired. I did a free consultation. I had 30 minutes. I can ask him as many questions as they want. He he was auditioning for me. I was interviewing basically him in their 30-minute interview. That's how I treat it. I asked him a ton of questions on inventory. I brought up, you know, the laws, what I saw on the small business. Again, I read over the IRS's page. You can do that as well, too. Recommendations. You do not necessarily have to count your inventory. Depends on many factors. Just because I don't do it, though, doesn't mean that you wouldn't be required to. If you've only got a few hundred items up, you have no basis to do that. If you've, you know, you don't buy in bulk and might walk in with a couple thousand items in the same day, again, you you got to go back to basis. It's it's basically a, a, a instant cash uh, hit to my my um, charges, my cost. So my cogs that day, let's say I bought a thousand dollars worth of inventory. That inventory is recorded as a thousand dollar expense in the cogs, cogs, my purchase inventory column. And that is where it is recorded. So it's instantly hitting my, my amount. So if it sells later on, it doesn't matter. It's our, just income coming in at that point. It's already been paid for. That's why a lot of times you'll see that I, I say I've got nothing into it because it's immediately hitting my line. And from that point on, it, it's it's already expensed out. I've already paid for it, basically. It's come out of my, my profits right off the bat. And that's just like if, if, if you... Um, sorry, I've got somebody outside. If, if you... Um, totally lost my train of thought on there. I hate when that happens. Um, yeah, I've totally lost my whole train of thought. That That's terrible. Oh, with inventory-wise. 
So again, it, it's expensed out immediately. You can do things like accruing and things like that, carrying stuff over from one month to the next, but I, I don't do that. With our the amount of revenue that comes in with uh, invo or my inventory, there's enough revenue coming in every single month, every single week that I don't have to worry about. If I buy a thousand bucks, it's already covered, you know, and I'm still having the revenue stream. So depends on where you're at. Depends on the amount of inventory you are getting and how you do it in foods, let's say. In the food industry, um, not necessarily a like a retail establishment. In foods, you're, you're basically billed for a box of steaks. If you're working at a steakhouse, you, you are charged the amount for the steaks. Obviously, they do do an inventory to some extent. Most of them do basically for a theft issue so they know if steaks are walking off the door. You don't necessarily have to do that. That's why I, I've my inventory structure is totally different than most people again, but I've got volume, 80,000 listings, um, probably $3 million worth of total inventory, a uh, million dollars right at, I think, up online now. So literally every one of those, every penny into all that inventory is done the exact same way. So it hits my bill, hits instantly as a cost, and it's all put in a certain spot. Everything's in a certain spot. Um, I've got shelves that are unlisted items, and they're semi-sorted now these days. We, we try to keep certain things in certain spots. So when you go to list something, you can instantly find stuff that's not listed. It's on a different section of the building, and the whole works too. And when I, I store stuff, I do try to keep like-to-like -like items together. So those bins, you know, I'll have a whole bunch of like the small ones we showed you that will be all paper items. You know, all the cards are here, all this is there. Because if you sell specific items like what I sell, like the paper items, like the, the paper and stuff, I sell routinely to the same people. Uh, like today, I sold three different per or three different sales of multiple items. So three individual sales, that person bought two or three items at least. And they're usually the same type of items and they're usually in the same area. So it makes sense to condense things that are like to like items in the same area. It's a lot easier to find. It's a lot easier to pull. You can, when, when we open up a list of items to pull, I literally right click with the mouse and I open up a new new tab. And that tab is the listing so we can instantly see the picture on it without having to do anything else. Um, when you got a lot of quantity, you can't just judge by what the title says. And I know there's people that can just pull by title with only a few hundred items. They go, oh, I know that item. I know that item. I don't list most of the items that we have. So I don't remember what's up and what's not most of the time. You know, I, I go through our inventory, I do check stuff at the end of the night, make sure it, stuff isn't messed up if somebody does have, um, uh, hang on just a second here, um, make sure somebody didn't mess up a listing or something like that too. Um, if you're enjoying the conversation, please hit the like button down there. That does give us a little boost here. Got over 160 people in house and 38 likes. Um, again, I'm trying to cover a lot of questions here, so I'm going through my little notes here i did kind of arrange what i wanted to talk about so everybody could get their answers uh, uh their their answers to their questions on the live show um but again that's really it for everything everything is binned up the exact same way um if it's collectibles broken items like or breakable items like glass i've got basically um, like bins that are in shelves that have a slide out drawer. And that's literally how I do smalls and glassware, shot glasses, ashtrays. You can get them at Office Max, Home Depot. I order ours through Walmart online, one of the Wayfair, it's one of those other vendors on there. You can get them on Amazon too. You get them on your prime day so you don't pay for shipping on them. That's what we usually do if it's something like that. But you can get three and five tall. I wouldn't usually get more than that if you're putting glass in them. We also use those for belt buckles and things like that too, those types. Plates, that's an excellent, the, the stacked little cabinets are excellent for plates because you can fit two uh, stacks in one of the little drawers. Well, they're not super little, but it depends again on the size you get. And then you can stack those up. And I just put the little um, felt pads between each plate and hence I have no issues. There's nothing going to fall on them or anything like that. I, I've seen a few people's uh, setups where they store their glasses and their their um, 
uh, cup and saucers and things like that. And they have them just sitting on shelves. I have everything like that in a bin, even the breakables. Even if it takes up a hair more space, I just can stack them because they're in shelves. Pull out drawer kind of things. They're like three and five units tall. I've shown them before. There's some two unit tall ones too and stuff like that. Um, that's the basics on, on most everything there. I, I can't think of anything that we have that's not stored exactly like I showed you, just in bigger bins, bigger dividers. Now for dividers, I get the eBay boxes, the, the what are they, the 14-inch cubes, I think is what they finally got back under. Maybe they're the 12-inch cubes. I think, yeah, I think they're the 12-inch cubes. And I literally just cut the flaps up, you know, and use one of those boards. And that separates all my records, uh, 78s, LPs. For the 45s, I have a lot of people asking, well, how do you store 45s? Every record sits on its edge. Every record sits on its edge. And they're just divided up with a cardboard slap between them. With like a 45, we've got, I don't remember what size box it is, but if you cut off the flaps, they're the exact size you need. You just cut them down a hair and you're all set for your 45s. If you go to, um, uh, again, Amazon or Walmart, usually where I get the totes at because they're cheaper. This is a business uh, expense. I, I'm, they're, I've never damaged a tote that I can ever remember. So, you know, if they're cheaper totes, I don't really care. They sit on a shelf and there's stuff over them. They're all covered up in the whole work. So that's what I use for 45s is just a small, long uh, plastic tub. You know, sometimes I've got a couple that are, they're, I think, 10 inches tall for the 45s. And then I just put three rows in that same long tote. So it's maybe 36 inches wide, 14 inches across. So I can do three rows in that box and I put a divider this way and then I put a divider in between each bin number of them. So I just pull out, it's like a drawer almost, a drawer with a lid. So you can just pull them on out. There's wheels on some of those too. And um, like the bottom of every shelf, you have the spot where you can use one of the wheeled storage bins underneath them. And they're about yay high. All of my shelves that everything sits on is all off the floor. So there's about eight or nine inches or so, or 10 inches, whatever it is, underneath every shelf in my building. And that way, if, you know, all the stuff on the shelves are off the ground. So if the water comes in for some screwy reason, they're off the ground. Plus, if I need to, I can slide the rolling bins underneath my shelves too. It fits, well, it fits three actually under the shelves. And that's an eight foot shelf. You can fit three bins across. Um, basically the size we're talking about here. So again, that's the, the gist on all of storage. Storage is all the same for us. It's all exactly that, just different size bins. Um, I can't think of anything else that, that we do differently other than, than just that. Again, the size doesn't matter. If, if, if I've got expensive photos, I just put them in sleeves too, just like I showed you the postcards and things like that. I'll put some in group together. If the photo is over 50 bucks, it goes that goes that way. Labels. If it's a label, the same thing. It goes just like that. There'll be bags inside of something. Or it'll go in accordion like I showed you. I, again, I got a bunch of those accordions all over the place. Those accordions work great. They cost about 8 or $9. You can order them from every single office supply company that I can think of. Those accordions hold will take an 8x10 photo. That is the biggest lobby card or small press kit uh, lobby or something like that will fit in there. Anything 8x10 or smaller. Now, there are some bigger versions of those that you can order. They're more expensive. Um, if it's larger than that, I'll sometimes use the drawers or they will sit flat in one of those totes too. I do have some items that sit flat. Um, nothing that would hurt it. So no comic books um, usually go that way. They're usually standing up carefully. Uh, they're tight too. Now I've talked about the empty um, rolls of tape as well. Those are spacers for every single type of material that I have. Oh, I probably don't have one here, do I? Let's see if I got one with this. Yeah, I do. I don't, wasn't sure if I did. So the empty rolls of tape are in probably 80% of these, of everything. And if, if it's records, there's a bunch of these. I, I, they're bumpers. I use these as bumpers on records. If you've got 78 records, I literally take like 10 or so of these, or I don't know how many to take, 3, 4, 12 of these. And I get them constantly because I go through a couple rolls of tape a day most of the time. And I'll tape them together. It just takes a few moments. And these are excellent for bumpers. And it spreads out any weight or anything else like that. It levels off the bins. And for stuff like this, it's always best to store vintage paper items tight. You don't want them where they can slide around and corners can bend. So when you, th this thing was full when we started off. 
which is many of these, many of these bins were full, as opposed to coming back in and, you know, going ahead and recategorizing and moving stuff around, we just shove these in the back of it here. And then it takes up the space and it's much tighter. Now, uh, once these get down to a certain point, we'll put more cards in here. I'll use the same numbers over again. eBay now, uh, they didn't used to have this, so we couldn't do this in the past. But they now show in every listing, you can instantly tell when they were listed. You can, you can search it easily, I should say. Before, you couldn't actually search very well. But the point of it is now you can, so it doesn't matter where it goes. So if I list some new items and put them in an old number, it doesn't matter because I can just sort my store from oldest to newest. FIFO first in, first out, which is a industrial standard. So that's the point on those. Everything is um, bumpered with the empty tape rolls. Every single thing is bumpered with empty tape rolls. I have never had one damage a 78, a record anything i use them for mailing you tape them together into tubes you can use them for mailers if you really want i haven't done that but it's an excellent thing to to use for bumpers and to fill up the space because you're going to sell stuff and as you sell it your inventory needs to be adjusted so stuff isn't getting broken with 78s once i start emptying 78s i'll just put in some more you know uh, empty rolls and off i go you know, it, it, it's time saving as opposed to me going and recategorizing everything and stuff like that until I'm going to get enough space to list a whole new bunch into an, into an old bin. Um, and again, retrieving everything is the same way. It's just as easy to retrieve it because they're all numbered. Everything is numbered. There's a space and a slot for everything in this building. And it's the, it's the best way. I, I did it in, in working for somebody else. It worked so well. That's why I do the exact same basic principle. My whole structure of business is base inventory. All this is based on what I did working for other people as a regional or as a general manager. It's the same basic. Honestly, everything's the same. Same income or same, you know, structure set up, uh, inventory counting and all that kind of stuff. So I know that rambled on there, but hopefully that answered a lot of the questions. Uh, as I said, I've gotten a ton of questions on literally inventory specifics. Uh, Amazon Seller 99, how are you doing? maximizing space is incredibly huge in my book um again i i try to get rid of a lot of larger items i don't mess with many larger items because of that i i used to sell what everybody else does i was clothing books you name it we've sold it um even a, a prevo motorhome i mean it's a major major expense thing we sold the the, the point of it is it didn't matter to us when we first started and then we realized that space is going to be a big problem we took up our entire bedroom and had to worry about it from that point on when we first started i had an eight foot shelf of just full of stuff and we had nothing marked so we learned our lesson never thought we'd get as big so even if you only have a few hundred items up start doing this setup or a setup like this immediately don't wait till you realize hey i've got five six hundred items up and now i don't know how to find anything anymore and i hear that constantly uh, i heard it a lot more when we first got on here because you know there's a lot more people talking about it but the, the point again is everything should be labeled marked and everything you, you keep it the same every every way too if if you change it make sure everything is changed from that point on so you're not using two different methods of keeping track of your inventory and as well if you're if you're going to think about doing a specific inventory and not doing the counting or something you darn well better check with an accountant you better have a reason you better have um, knowledge on the, the that aspect of it you will run into probably an accountant or two that say it's risky based on you know you not being a large vendor or anything else like that i think the limit is two million dollars if you sell over over two million dollars a year you have to keep inventory if i'm not mistaken i think that is the 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 cutoff limit i'm sure somebody out there i've talked to accountants enough in, in my day but i'm pretty sure that's the amount that it is uh let's pop down here Dale cole how are you doing carly d welcome Record crate. I've been a record crate picker, so I know exactly the term. Uh, Trina Sirk, how are you doing? Good evening. Sunday Fun Day, Pamela Sabana, how are you doing? Haven't seen you in here in a little while. Sherry Parker, newbie, your vids are immensely helpful. Thank you very kindly. Andrew Merritt, welcome, welcome. Rochelle Snodgrass, welcome. 
there's Annie. Uh, I, I saw your comment on the clothing. And I already forgot. Brocade, I think, was what you said. Yeah, that was the exact term I was looking for in uh, the, the clothing. I'm sure you know exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, Stratus9, good evening, good evening. Trina, I am still trying to become Patreon member. I just want to let you know. No hurry. You're, it's, do what you need to do. Take care of yourself first. B Rivers, how are you doing? My first auction professor live chat. Well, welcome, welcome, welcome. Good to have you in the house. Let's see. My, my chat's probably going to bounce for a second because it's locked up on this one. Let's see if it's locked up on the other one. Yeah, I think it's locked up on this one here. There it goes. Hang on. And I didn't lose my spot. Or did I? Yeah, I guess I did. Hang on just one second. Let me get back to where I was. Okay. Uh, let me see here. Mr. Boz a lot. Good evening, as I said. There's Dom in the house right there. How you doing, Dom? Dom, primetime treasure hunter. Good friend of the channel. I'm sure we'll be having another video together here shortly. Uh, let's see here. YouTube Premium solves that problem. Haven't watched a commercial on YouTube for years. Yeah, we have. It's YouTube Red, I think, is what it's called. We have the family package. I think it's like 15 bucks a month. Um, and we've had it for years, too. I, I don't see any commercials ever on YouTube. Uh, my wife just does playlists for exercise and stuff like that, too. So um, I would recommend it in all honesty uh, in, in my book. I, I never looked back. I would never say turn it off because it's worth the 15 bucks for the amount of stuff that we do on YouTube, the kids and everything else, as I said. And each one you can get, I think it's like five logins or maybe more than that you can get uh, built into there. So, uh, Eduardo, how are you doing this evening? Good to see you in here. Uh... You're welcome, Marty. No problem at all, Marty. Maybe that'll help you out there a little bit. Uh, now I've lost my spot, I think. I'm used to seeing your other name, Marty. I think that's what it is. It's been a while, yes. Glad to see you back in the house, Eduardo, though. Uh, Jeffrey D., good evening, Jeffrey. Kathy Keen, thank you as well. Uh, Mr. Hot Wheels, how are you doing, Chuck? Thank you, thank you very kindly. There was somebody else with the Hot Wheels in their name. I saw another one the other day. Oh, geez. It was on a toy thing. It was somebody with one of those toy channels. Uh, let's see here. Mr. Buys a lot. Jimmy there. Yep. Hang on. Let's pop down here. Hey, Nancy. How are you doing this evening, Nancy? Um, I'll probably get to some of the emails from Patreon. I was just on the other day. Um, I will probably get to everyone before I've got a, uh, I've got a doctor's appointment tomorrow and I did have one, uh, just the other day too, uh, after some results came back in. So my diet has drastically changed in the last week. Um, I don't want to get into that too much because it's very depressing to have, to, I've lost dairy and a lot of sugary items. So, um, anyway things go on hopefully tomorrow i'll have some better answers for for my own personal uh, um well-being uh let's see here where are we at hey daryl carolina picks in the house good evening good evening timothy timothy arts i have two videos timothy actually showing every single step of the way for packing if you type in ultimate media I think that's all you would need to do. Ultimate Media Guide, I think, is in the title. On my uh, In my video list, you'll find one for sure. There are two up that show every step. But that one, I give out measurements, and they're typed on the screen. So if you watch the screen, you can literally see every step I take to pack every single type of media. I, I cover cylinder records, 45s, LPs. LPs and 45s are packed the same way, just different sizes. 78s are covered very nicely in there as well. Um, it, it goes over everything, literally every every aspect of packing 78s. We've sent out thousands of them. I got more to send out in the morning. We just took some offers. I sent out offers to watchers like 10 minutes before the show started, and I've already gotten quite a few sales just in that last little bit. We've been on for 48 minutes, 50 minutes, um, $75 sale. I did get a decline on one, but I got 75 on that one. 10, uh, 15. We sold about $120 in an hour and like 12 minutes, I would say. 
Hang on one second here. So, I mean, I can't complain. Uh, Sales-wise, I've had a lot of people talking about sales issues. Overall, I might have a dip here or a dip there, um, and then I'll just hammer out some offers to watchers. I still have not had to run a single solitary discount, markdown, or uh, I haven't used promoted listings at all. I don't pay eBay for promoted listings and haven't done that in over a year, year and a half. I don't know, maybe two years. I don't know. It's been a long time. And sales-wise, are still rolling. Again, you, you get out of it what you put in. Uh, title-wise, I just, just did a video just literally talking about the importance of titles and how that can literally get you sales. One single word missed in your title can prevent it from selling. And I, I, I don't care. Anybody says that's true. Um, I always use the pug dog example or a, a very weird dog example. Pug dog in a title will get an item sold if there's a pug pictured in an, any type of item usually. There's a ton of pug dog collectors. It's like one of those dogs that this isn't meant as an insult because kind of describes my dog, but they're so ugly they're cute. Like that's what I used to think about chihuahuas, and now we have two full blood chihuahuas. So, and I think they're adorable. So anyway, that's just me, I guess. Uh, let's see where are we at. Uh, Hillbilly hipster, clear totes are the way to go. 100% clear totes are definitely the best way to go. Don't store anything in, in solid color totes. Don't ever, 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 ever do that. That's the first thing I learned in food 20 plus years ago. I could instantly tell what's and where, and you can instantly tell before you put something away that you're not putting raw food over cooked food. So again, that's it's in food wise, you always have it now. In some areas, you'll see like metal pans. Those go on lines. It's a different story. You only can put raw food on you know, a shelf. and there's, there's a bunch of things with it. But the point of it is that plastic. Clear, 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 clear plastic. I don't know how many times I could instantly tell where my item was before I even pulled the bin out, especially the big bins sometimes when I have you know random weird size items in there. It's instant. I can see it before I even pull it out. So I got to flip the lid out, grab my, grab it, and I'm done. Instead of waiting to pull it off, getting it down, looking through there, I can tell if it's down on the side or anywhere. Don't ever use it. I don't care what anybody does. It's, it's, it's just not smart. It's just it's costing you time, and they're the same price. And in fact, I think it's actually cheaper for the clear ones than it is for the solid, like the rubber made that I see people buy. You don't need the big expensive bins. I'm cheap. I've had the same bins for 10 plus years. I have not replaced a single zip, zero, six, uh, a single solitary bin because it was damaged. Not one, ever. And that's 10 years, almost 11 years now of, of doing full time with tons of bins. I mean, I got hundreds of these things all over the place. I've got, you know, a couple thousand bucks probably into just bins, you know, but that's what you need. Don't, don't be cheap on buying the stuff that you need. It doesn't mean you, you buy the most expensive ones, but you, you investigate. I checked, you know, like weight and all that stuff. You can look on like tension or, or tear strength and stuff like that too, if you want. There's grade numbers on the bottoms of them too, if it's a printed in a vacuum um, um, uh, injection mold system. Most of the time there'll be numbers on the bottom. Those numbers on most every piece of plastic will give you some idea on the type of plastic and how much weight it can hold. So just FYI, we, we've started to cast some of our own. As I said, we do have, we spent some, some money on a, a home plastic injection molding system here for action figures. They'll be made from scratch. There'll be a bunch of stuff coming out really, really soon. I know it's been a couple of years, but this isn't something I wanted to do lightly. We've, we've got some money with lawyers and copyrights, trademarks. All that stuff takes a long time, which, you know, I've, I own some copyrights and some trademarks. Just FYI, we've, we've added to our list and stuff like that. So I, I, I want to have all my ducks in a row. What, when that comes out, too, I know I'm changing the topic here for a minute, though, but I will have some toy guys, some toy stores on my channel when we talk about that. I don't know if it'll be on this one or the other channel, but um, it's coming real soon. I promise you that the, that aspect's coming out. Um, I do get people from time to time asking and, and watching those. I've made a profit on every single art production run we have ever done. Every single one. And not because of YouTube, because I've been doing that long before I was ever on YouTube. Um, the point of it is if you've got, you know, you can make your own own product. You can literally make it in your house these days um, with just a few thousand dollars and some, you know, some of your time, learning curve time. Um, I've seen the unit that we're getting. It's 
paid for it. It's not in here yet. Um, but I've seen it working in person. So I feel very comfortable sinking uh, thousands into that and a bigger vacuum former. And um, my printer who does our postcards is doing the backer boards for our toy runs. They'll be at New York um, Toy Fair and probably Dragon Con and Comic Con um, next year. Not this year, unfortunately, but next year. So you might see us traveling. Um, I, will, I know there's a couple of people who have reached out to us um, in Atlanta that we might resellers and things like that. And I've got some other friends in Atlanta, too. So we've got some plans. Um, again, I'm, I'm, I'm working year two, five years down the road. We're already in plans and work. So... As I've talked about many times, I've always got a vision or somewhere where I'm going. I've always got goals um, with everything. And again, when we when we got the inventory and we started expanding to this massive amount of stuff, um, we we downsized the big items. And getting rid of say 50 big items gave us space for like 10,000 small items. You know, it's it's a no-brainer. Now, I know everybody doesn't just have the ability to cut off big purchases big items because you don't have the sourcing locations for certain things but everything just comes in time um i i was talking to somebody in patreon the other day and i my heart goes out to you i won't call it any names but um you know it's it's just a, a daunting task um trying to build it up and all all the pitfalls and things that happen as a new business um starting off and not being able to source and with the pandemic and, and all that kind of stuff I'm lucky, and I, 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 I honestly am really, really lucky, at least in that aspect, because um, I don't need a source. I, 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 God, I don't need to source at all. Still do it. I, I was talking to Dom. I'm, he's probably still in here. I was talking to Dom um, a few nights ago, and I sent him a photo of a, I got Raphael. It's, it's, it's a ninja, original Ninja Turtle. Um, I think it came out right after issue four, three or four. And um, I was dropping off leftovers from an auction. I drop them off at a thrift store over here. It helps um, a women's society. It's a Christian group. And um, inside there for a quarter piece were some comic books. And there was two of these. And I knew it was worth a few bucks. Again, I'm just dropping off stuff. And um, for a quarter piece, I picked up two $400 comic books. I got some other ones too. But, you know, those are the ones that are going to make my... I'm keeping one and I'm selling the other one. Uh, but that's the kind of thing that, you know, that's one of those weird things that happens. I, I still source. I don't need to, but nobody's in their right mind is going to pass up a quarter purchase that's sitting there for $400. Now, I gave them extra money, but it's just the principle that, you know, I don't try to source. Um, I'll go by, and sometimes I just like the act of looking. So I'll drive by, and there'll be a, a you know, a garage sale or something, rare case around here, but, you know, and I might find something, but... Anyway, let's pop back over to some some folks here. Did someone say comic books? Yeah, there you are, Dom. How you doing, Dom? Uh, Joe, the bread man, reseller channel. How are you doing? Lakewood Ranch, Florida. I know Lakewood. I don't know Lakewood Ranch. Yeah, Crystal, I know the color is available because after you've done this for a while, you... you I understand that the differences in color of bins, why somebody would want those, but all you got to do is just get different colored lids and then it solves the problem. Because the clear bins all have, uh, and I can see most of the lids because my whole, everything's surrounded by, by the bins, everything in here. I've got so many of them, hundreds of them, honestly. Yeah, but I do know the colors. I hate to say that, but once you've, you've had to pick colored lids to figure out, you know, what lid color goes with which things and how you're going to separate, make it easy on yourself. You'll, you'll remember what kind of lids and what colors they are. I know that may seem a little odd, but that's just me. Uh, let's see here. Let me pop down a little bit farther. Gail, how are you doing? Does it affect the search if you put funny things in the title? If it's, just to be funny, you're eating up space for no reason, I guess would be the point. And no one's going to be looking for it. Uh, it uh, uh, this was something else somebody made a comment on the other day. Um, somebody told me that you had to put sentences, or a lot of people told them you had to make a sentence for your title. You don't have to. Uh, keywords is all you need. It doesn't have to make any sense or mean anything. I just fill up a whole bunch of words in the title. I've always done it that way. There's no, the, the, the logarithm isn't going to check to see if you've punctuated and made a complete sentence, whether there's a noun and everything's proper and adjectives. It's not going to do that. All you got to do is make sure that when you set up your title, your keywords, the most important ones are farthest to the left. 
Now, that's more important for those 30 to what's more than that now. It's like 37 percent, probably 40 percent or better. I haven't looked, honestly. I probably should look of people buying from the phone right now. The, the phone cuts off. Anybody who's looked on the phone knows you only see so much of the title. You want as much of the key, most important words farthest to the left. Even if it shows up in that search result, you want the words that are going to pop all the way to the left of your title. So when someone's scrolling through a phone, and I scroll really fast, faster than it drives my family nuts, but I've, I've done it so long, I just scroll really fast. And I can see really easily, you know, the, by the words I'm looking for. So, you know, that's just, just my recommendations on that. Um, FG55 at the end of a title would that hurt the algorithm? No, it would not hurt it. it it's just going to be an uh, non. It's going to be an unused word or, or you know, FG55. No one's going to be having that in their title. That's why I do put like my bin numbers in the title. It doesn't affect a search result at all because even the item specifics, which again, there's a specific slot you can put a custom um, SKU number in there, and it gives you that option. It's not searching through some of those options. You know, so I haven't seen any negative issues that I could possibly imagine with doing that. Again, I've played with titles, God, probably more than anybody I know. Well, I'll, I'll take that back, Dave. There's one person I know is even crazier than I am on uh, doing the titles. And we, he, we make fun of each other, but I think he's taught me now on titles. Um, the point of it is, though, that I do, I do trending searches on in Google Trends I use. I, I do a ton of things trying to figure out the best, most relevant uh, keyword searches for specific items. The results, too, that you get it depends on how you type in those words sometimes as well, too, by the way they, they do it. And the results that are returned to the buyer or the potential buyer after he types in his keywords trying to find your items may center his results in on a specific single small niche category and be knocking out half of all items on the site that may be of interest to them because the way eBay is forcing the buyer into a specific category with many different uh, listings. I'll give you a good example on that because I constantly have people ask on that. Type in on a, just a uh, random search on eBay the word Weeble, W-E-E-B-L-E, -E -E, and then Weebles. Add an S on the end. Type in two different ones. One will take you to a toy-only category for, I think it's preschool play sets or something like that. And the other one will just show you all of eBay. And it's like that for tons and tons of different things. So what's a person going to be looking for? I know people put both words in there and things like that. That can too mess up it. If you, again, you can try that. Try the, even the order you put those words in. One day we spent like an hour and a half, two of us here, and we typed in uh, like four different combinations of words for just over and over again. Wiped out, you know, we cleared the browser history and cache and all that junk on multiple different, I think we had like six or seven laptops running that day. And I spreadsheeted everything because I'm, I'm anal retentive like that. That's the kind of thing that I do. And um, there's, it's patterned. I mean, it, it's just like YouTube's logarithm sometimes. It's, it's, you can see, you can get a pattern out of it if you compare certain things. I mean, everything seems to be that way. It's like the, the programmer was lazy or it's cut and paste. Again, you can cut and paste programming, just FYI, for those who don't know it. I, I took programming in college, quite a few different uh, things. But you can cut and paste and nest and all that stuff. You know, you don't even have to know how to code everything to code these days. But um, So I think it looks like some lazy work in some of the coding on, on eBay for sure and on what looks like Amazon for, t for sure. They took some shortcuts, but anyway... I know we're rambling. Let's go back on here. Milk crates are great to store records, too. Yeah, milk crates work okay, too. I like the fact that it's in a protected bin. If somebody sets water, liquid down, a milk crate's going to get... It's going to be totally spilled all in between them and everywhere else. And if they're tight in the milk crate and it pours on the top, it'll make a puddle. I've seen it. I'm giving you a real example. It'll make a puddle. And then the minute they get it shifted where there's now they're a little loose, it all drips down over all the records. So you might ruin a whole bunch instead of just a few. Um, but with, with plastic totes, there's a lid on them. The plastic lids, too, again, all the ones that we buy, the lid has a lip that goes over the edge. So there's no way if water's pouring on this that water is going to be able to wick back up through the side and get in there. So even if this entire tote, again, it doesn't matter what size, all the totes work this way. The water goes off the edge. I don't store anything 
again, no no disrespect from the tote things. I've used totes, you know, when I was just listening to them and stuff for years and years. But for business wise, I don't I wouldn't use anything like that personally. Um, everything has a cover on top of it. Every single thing. If it doesn't have a cover in it or over it, it's not for sale yet. Easy to tell. Because again, I don't trust anything or any damage or leaks or a window broken and water. Who knows? You never know. And, um, and I have insurance. So if I, I do everything properly and something happens, they can't argue that, hey, you didn't do this. We're not going to cover you. Um, BOP, business owner's policy. I've had one for years. Uh, and it's helped me at the bank. It's helped me everywhere I go showing, you know, more. It's, it's more legitimate. I can get people to front us inventory when I'm doing wholesale purchases with that insurance claim. So FYI, that's why it's another plus for those who do wholesale. Um, even drop shipping. If, if you're a drop shipper out there, I know people frown on it. We've done a few times here and there. Um, if you're a drop shipper, the BOP, sometimes you can get inventory set aside for you and they can, you know, charge it against insurance or at least they, they know it'll be covered as long as your insurance is valid, like a writ of service or something like that. Bill, bill of late and 30 day uh, post pay due or something like that. We uh, sometimes will get merchandise and not have to pay. The bill will be due at the end of the month. We've got good credit, so I can use that and the insurance to cover. So if it's damaged here, they know that my insurance will cover the loss of their merchandise so I can at least afford to pay them back. I guess that's the point. Again, again that comes into inventory. My inventory is covered with insurance. I, I can tell you right now we have $3 million plus of inventory. That's I know that because every year we evaluate the the amount of inventory we have in house and we adjust our insurance, the amount of insurance we cover for the amount of inventory we have in the building. So you have to have a retail value and then a purchase value is what we come up with when we do it. So just FYI, I can instantly tell the retail value on active stuff, which on eBay, as I said, it's like a million. Just in the store I share with you, we have a million dollars in in list price items. It's not what we get for them, but that's list price items. Cheap uh, garbage Walmart bins are not good for records. I've had issues with those. Now, I'm not saying cheap Walmart bins. Now, I'm, I order from online, and they're not Walmart brand bins. They're the... I can't think of... There's another name. There's a brand that doesn't, but they're... They can hold like 400 pounds or something. I've got buttons in the bins that I, I have, and there's 450 in just one bin alone of that and that's more than the records way so and these are the plastic i don't i hate to pull one out but and if you're using the the plastic bins like with 78s i only store i think about 50 or 60 they're in the half size bins i put two of those on the shelf just because of sheer weight to carry them um you know so you can do that too so instead of like the three foot wide ones you get a well, foot and a half wide and you just get two of those and you just add a number to each one um, so maybe I'll do a video and just a quick video on 78 records in general and show you the easy, easy peasy ways to mess with 78s. I've got some sitting right next to me. That's why I keep looking over there. Um, yeah, but as I said, cheap is not the, I'm cheap, but we do buy quality. I check the, the strength of the bins. As I said, again, look at the bottoms of them. There's numbers, numbers stamped them. We do plastic casting and stuff like that. So I've paid attention to what those numbers mean. Um, like with, with the uh, injection, plastic injection molding, we can cut up old milk cartons and you can use any of that, any plastic you can reuse if it says recycled on it for your own home. So I could get free plastic so I could make uh, figures in, you know, out of nothing, basically freebies. You can re it's recycling, you know, so anyway. Yeah, just don't get the cheap cheap. Order them offline is the point. If, if you don't want to have them shipped to your house, you can order off of Walmart and have them shipped to your local store, too. We've done that a few times. They'll wheel them all out. Last time we ordered shelves, they wheeled them out for us and brought them out to the vehicle. So, um, I found some industrial-specific shelves for vinyl, and they work well. Uh, three shelves high and milk crates on top is the best system I've found so far. Yeah, I, I'm not a milk crate person for storing. If I'm selling it, it's got to be protected. Um, I'm, I'm very uh, nutso on the whole cover everything kind of thing. Even just for dust. Even just for dust. I get what you're talking about, the specific ones, though, Amazon Seller 99. I'm just, I just never trust anything, I guess, I guess is the point. We've had water pipes break. I know Dom's had a flood issue where some of his stuff was damaged and stuff. So Deidre, how are you doing this evening? 
It's see-through. That's the whole point, yes. Uh, let me pop down. I know I'm behind. Where do I buy plastic sleeves? I buy them 5,000 if you're talking about the postcard sleeves. I buy those 5,000 at a time, and they're uh, they're 2 mil, I think, or 1.5 mil. Maybe they're 1 mil. I'll, I'll have to post a little thing on that. They're probably down in my links, though, but I just buy whoever has them the cheapest because they're all basically made identical. It's just rolled um, as long as the seal's right. I just There's like five companies that make those. If you buy, I think, 5,000, it's like 30-some-odd bucks, I want to say, shipped. Um, at least the three and a half by five and a half size. I also buy the five by seven ones, uh, the sleeves. I'm only talking about the sleeves. Those are the, <clears throat> the only two sleeves I buy. Other than that, we buy like, I don't know, they're pretty big bags. And then we just cut them down or just tape them. Because I can get um, uh, one huge assortment, like 10,000 of these bags, for almost nothing when I buy in quantity. And it's cheaper. They're, they're one mil bags. It's cheaper than me sitting there and trying to buy like 15 different sizes to cover all the different stuff that we get. So I took what's the biggest item we have that would fit in one of the bigger bags, and that's what I ordered. And when we, it's too big, we either just fold it over, or I just, I got a zip cutter that just zip, and it cuts the bag down real quickly. And I can basically use, use it as two different bags. Um, I've got impulse sealers and stuff here too, just FYI. Uh, food industry, an impulse sealer seals the opening of a bag, so you can just impulse seal in between and instantly have a whole bunch of bags. You can actually buy rolled bags and use an impulse sealer and uh, make them custom every time. It's really quick too. I mean, you can set it up where it's always ready, just FYI. Uh, impulse sealer takes a little wire and it's got Teflon coating between the wire and the item you're going to seal, the plastic and it seals a bag. I've, I've worked with vacuum sealers in the food in industry, you know, big industrial cryovac units and all that stuff. It's interesting, that part. I like that aspect of it more than the food part, but obviously. Uh, Bluegrass Picker, good evening. Evening back at you. Let me pop on down here. Uh, my feed freezes up from time to time. Again, I'm running off of a computer here, but I'm importing this video from a different uh, laptop so we're trying to see and so far i haven't had any drop frames or anything running off our new i got a monster pc we just bought um to do some animation and some other stuff we've been working on um if, if no one's if there's i know there's a bunch of people i don't know but we've been working on an animated short for like a year and a half i've got thousands invested into labor hours and we're getting close. Um, it just takes a long time when you're working on it. Few few days here, a few days there. But um, uh, bluegrass mainly he sells mainly sports cards. Let, let's talk. I got something I wrote down. The letter tracking rate that eBay offers for what seventy five cents or whatever it is for sports cards for under twenty dollars. There are some major issues with it apparently. Um, Ina has a post on e-commerce bytes literally talking about that, but I've been having people uh, reach out to me because I saw a lot of smalls asking me about it and stuff like that. The, the post office has nothing whatsoever to do with that form of tracking. That's something only eBay has, and it does not get an initial scan at all. So it only is scanned through the normal asks access of it's going through the system. So it won't get an initial scan, so you'll never, you won't be able to show it's in the mail or anything else like that. And I've been seeing reports that people aren't getting end scans, it's not being scanned through the system. And then when you talk to the post office about it, they don't know what you're talking about because they didn't inform a single solitary person because it's not set up for them to do anything. It's only available to be purchased from eBay, and that is it. And only on the specific item category uh, things that they have stated that it would go on. And the other things I've I've personally now seen, and she brings them up as well in the e-commerce bite uh, article, is that um, I've had two people now tell me that they were charged once it hit the mail uh, for insufficient postage because they had no clue on what was going on, and it went through the system, it was flagged, pulled out, and returned to sender, trying to figure out why they only paid paid seventy five cents and it had all this other tracking junk on it with this big uh, um, label. It's, you're, you're printing off a normal size label from eBay, basically. Well, it's not normal size, but the, the point of it is that there's people that have been charged for full 
whole three dollars and some odd shipping for those same packages. No one at the post office informed the staff or any of the counter uh, people because there's there's nothing they do on it. It's not a service they offer. It's through some other third party thing that pulls off the tracking number. So. From what I see, that's very misleading, to say the very least, on that whole aspect of that tracking system. And it, it makes me rethink the whole aspect of using it in the first place from just what I've seen already. Again, I don't blame anybody at the post office who's working at the counters. It's not their responsibility to know about something that the post office isn't doing, but eBay's doing. So there are some major issues that were left out from what I see in that aspect of it. It's not this all big bonus thing that they offered us. There is a secondary tracking service that you can get. It's like 10 or some odd cents for like postcards. And it goes on a regular envelope and it uses the same basic principle. That was around before eBay. So all eBay is doing is they stole this. Now Popeye... Most people probably don't remember Popeye from Popeye's postcards. He's left on eBay or left YouTube. But um, he's the one who pointed out that other tracking service. That's all eBay has done is they have taken somebody else's idea and using it. And people on HIP use it too. So I've, I've heard about it and I've seen it. I just don't use it. But the point of it is it, eBay couldn't even come up with their own means. They're using somebody else's already around uh, tracking service, basically. In fact, for all I know, it's the same one that this um, this other service is. It might be through them. I haven't even looked into it because I don't... I, at this point, I'm really hesitant if I'm even going to want to use it. So that's just my take on that. But anyway, uh, one other thing, too. I've With the new fee structure coming out, uh, I did talk to eBay on several occasions to make sure this is correct. I've probably had a dozen people ask me, um, they're in a year plan, which is something I would recommend. eBay has stated openly, everyone I've talked to, that if you uh, want to drop down to a lower rate, even if you're in a year contract with them and have six, seven months, whatever left, you can do it without assessing any fees. If for some reason, again, I've asked this several, several times, every time it's been the same answer, they've been hammered with this answer. If for some reason it tries to bill you, just contact eBay and they will make sure that that does not happen. I got names this time. I wrote down everybody's name I talked to to make sure that if it does happen or anything else like that. So for those of you who, who can now drop down a store level because you're getting more free listings to compensate for the difference in paying so many cents over your initial free listings, you can drop down without being afraid. Now, I don't know how long that's going to be, but um, prior to, at least until the rollout happens for the next update. So FYI, that was something I have probably a dozen people ask that question. I wrote it down, which I usually don't do. Let me pop on down and get some more questions. Not going to stay on a super long time. I'll give it another five or ten minutes here. Uh, I sell mainly sports card. Let's see. Tyler, how are you doing? I have a spot for items that need listing. Once I list it, it gets stored with the corresponding number. I assign that item. Yep, that's what I don't I don't no I'm I don't number every single item. That's one thing I've seen. I've seen people with like stamps and things, and every individual item is is labeled and stuff. That's a time killer. Um, I just put them in a bin, 30 items in a bin usually, and they all go together. Whatever it is, toys, action figures, guns, marbles, whatever. There's about 30 in there. It takes just a few moments to lay it out on the table and grab the one that's that you're looking for, no matter what I'm doing. Action figures is real easy. Postcards, same kind of thing. Uh, let's see here. The old man's picks. How are you doing? Yes, please hit the like button. <clears throat> I'm uh, right at, what, 191 it looks like. 191 in house, 109 uh, thumbs up. If you're enjoying it, just hit the thumbs up for us, please. AZ, uh, Township of Ohio, you live. I live outside of Toledo, uh, general area, Lucas County. Uh, still teaching me new tricks after all this time. Well, glad to hear, Michelle. Good to see you in the house, too. You've been around for a long time with us here. As has Crystal. I see Crystal right there, too, again. Uh yeah, the tape rolls, I know I'm behind, I'm always behind. The tape rolls work great, man. I, I used to throw them away. I used to just recycle, not throw them, recycle them. We do cardboard recycling here. but um, And then I'm like, why? And I, I started using them for spacers when we we're listing. If, like, let's say this bin, you're, I've showed this before. Let's say this bin, um, I'm just now starting to list it. And I only have, like, this little bunch here. What are you going to do with all that space? I just have some that are already always ready. I've got two, four, six, it's, it's four... 
I've got like four different versions. I've got one that has seven empty ones, two, 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 and then one. I've got one that has five, two, two, and one, and then two and one. So it fills in the space no matter where I'm at. So while we're listing it, the cards aren't moving all over the place. If we had to come up with something and I've got them, they're free. All it takes is a little tape. I've got cases of tape here, so you know what? What's the difference? You know, I keep the, those. I don't have to worry about spacers or, or, or cushion or you know any of that kind of stuff with any of the fragiles too. And I use them to mail stuff too. Um, thanks, bluegrass picker. I love seventy eights. I don't mind packing them. Honestly, um, I've probably listened to most of the higher dollar ones. I like the twenties. Honestly, some of the earlier music. Uh, I took a jazz history class even in, in college. Um, it's not my favorite type of music, obviously, but uh, anyway. Um, Moonstone Mamas, good evening as well. Thank you, Laura, uh, Laura B. I don't... I've broken some 78s. I sold a pair and I broke it. Not when I felt bad... I wasn't worried about if I if I took a hit on my feedback, it was my own fault. But I was more bothered that this record was the only one I've ever seen. It was a double record set. It was an, it was a scarce label and didn't sell for a lot of money. But I remember digging underneath in a dirty area, getting these out. No one else wanted to go back in there, and we made a lot of money from from me getting dirty that day. But um, I, I salvaged this these this set and I broke it. I set something on top of it. If you keep them standing up, you never lay them flat on top of each other. You're not going to have any problems. Again, that's why I've got I don't use crates because like if for 78s especially because any little nick you can bump it or something and break a whole bunch really easily. Um, in the plastic containers again, they're half size. They're not they don't go all the way back. They go halfway back through the shelf. Foot and a half or so is what they are wide or deep I would say. They're almost square, just a hair oblong, I guess. Um, but they work great. That's what I use for all of my 78s. And I, I never have broken one in storage. I broke it when I set it on the counter, which I could kick myself for. I could care less about the money. I, I, the person really wanted it. It was a Polish set, I think. It was something you just won't find. They probably only made a couple hundred of them to begin with. <clears throat> which 78 sell the best for you? Um, 1920s pre-war jazz sells excellent. Probably that and Rockabilly. I sold a couple Charlie Feathers. If if somebody out here doesn't know who Charlie Feathers is, you need to go to eBay, sold listings, or Pop Psych and type in Charlie Feathers. We sold two uh, 78s by, uh, of his. Well, we've sold more than two, but the two, um, they almost went for 1000 a piece. They were 50 cent records. Paid 50 cents for them. Charlie Feathers. Those are some of my favorites. I like Rockabilly. I like the baboons, uh, the baboons uh, drinking gasoline. Go to YouTube if you want to hear a modern day German Rockabilly. You'd never know they were German other than when he says 10,000 uh, miles. He, he, he says the German pronunciation. I took German in college or high school, but he says German. Um, it's the only song I like by them, but uh, that's a really good Rockabilly if you like Rockabilly at all. It's almost like a Johnny Cash. I'm not a huge Johnny Cash fan. I like his early stuff, his early rockabilly, but um, it sounds like Johnny Cash, I have to say. Uh, those are my favorites. Uh, I have sold some religious and gospel 78s in the five 600 range before, too. Um, I've sold a couple Eileen Woods 78s for some major money, too, as well. She's Cinderella, if you didn't know. She's got... Um, a LP too that it's late it's called that uh, goes for hundreds I, I always look for her stuff uh, anything Eileen Woods I buy anything Eileen Woods buy 78s by her like the Cinderella soundtrack if I get the Cinderella soundtrack by her with her actual voice because there's two versions of Disney you have like a non-movie version you want the movie version and uh, those usually go, I sell them individually. That's one of the ones I usually break up because I can usually get a little more selling them as an Eileen Woods uh, 78 disc as opposed to a Disney Cinderella two disc or three disc set. Now, I hate to do that, but you know I can at the end of the day sell the empty 78 sleeve for 40 bucks still. So that's what I usually do. There's a lot you can do that with, with 78. 78s are fun. I like 78s. I get excited when I see a huge stack of 78s. I have found more valuable 78s uh, lately than anything else. 
Um, it used to be it was 45s I was finding, but there's just far too many people in the 45s. And I'm not one to fight. I don't like to wait outside doors and stuff at sales and stuff. And I don't mess with it anymore. I just buy direct and big bulk. And if I get some, I get some real good ones. If not, but 78s now, I'm, I'm probably got a 80% success rate with buying big bulk lots of 78s with having some thousand dollar discs in there most of the time. So. Yeah, uh, Starfleet Command, um, I, uh, maybe this is before I brought up the BOP. I do have insurance on all inventory. It covers inventory, natural disasters. Um, they did drop the pandemic, though, which really TO'd me. Um, but um, it covers my equipment, my storage equipment, um, the building. It, it covers pretty much every single aspect from start to finish. Everybody wants to do this as a business, but far too uh, uh, many people don't cover it. If you drive a car, you've got insurance. So if somebody totals your car, you're not SOL with no way to get to work. With a business that um, supports you, it pays all your bills, you're going to take a chance and not have insurance. You know, I've had the same insurance company as well since I started this. It, it's It'll take you a little bit of time to find one. Um, if somebody hits me up privately, I would probably speak it out, but I don't uh, promote insurance or anything like that. I don't think they're legally allowed to either, but um, I will, I've told people who I use before. It's the best one I have found, and it's probably one of the only ones out there, but uh, anyway, get yourself a BOP. There's probably many other ones, but uh, anyway, I I'm very happy with paying the, I don't know, 190, 200 and some odd bucks a month. That's all it is for the amount of inventory I have, and I've got a lot. I've got a lot of electronics. I've got a lot of equipment. You know, thousands just in cameras alone we've got invested. So you got to have insurance. you you got to do it. If, if something happens, I am covered. I will not lose a day's sleep if a disaster happens and I lose a lot of the equipment and stuff. It'll all get, you know, reimbursed. You know, it'll take me time to build it back up and stuff, but I won't be out. And it'll be a huge lump sum of money, you know. Yeah, 78s are heavy. I'll go along with you, Marty, for sure, but. Hang on, I just. Uh, call around on insurance. Um, Hillbilly a Hipster has pointed out, I don't know if that's who they use, but call around on insurance. Don't just go to the first one. I called and talked to dozens. I mean, I talked to a whole bunch of insurance companies before we picked one. I had a list of questions. Um, I You got to know what might not be included. You got to read over every little aspect. We actually had our policy looked at with our, our legal advisor too, just to make sure that it was covered. And we actually turned down, we actually, we did, we did have another one. We did have somebody else we almost went with, but there was something in there that they weren't going to cover some kind of disaster. Maybe it was a hurricane or I don't remember what it was, but it was something really simpleton. We just went with, with who we have now. I'll, I'll give it to you. I, I go through a subsidy of Geico. I think it's, um, I guess it won't hurt. It's home site, I think, is what it's called. I've got a favorite place. In fact, I can, Geico home site, I think, is what it's called. I probably won't be able to find it real quick, but. Yeah, it's I'm I'm almost I'm almost positive it's Geico home site is who the title of what ours is. And if somebody reminds me after the show or posts some comments down if they're interested in knowing, I'll give you the exact information. I can probably give you the phone number and their website too. It's one of my favorite places. We just auto pay, they deduct. Now, if you sign up for business owner's policy from anyone that I see, and I'm going to give you this warning right now, they're going to demand an auto payment immediately, meaning that the first payment will hit you the minute they, they start your policy and you will be required to set up automatic payments from that point on. So you'll be automatically billed every month at the exact same time, set up an auto payments. You, that's the only option I've, I've been told by everyone that we got that that's what you needed to do for them to take you. Um, and I guess that's what most businesses do with that sort of thing. But Geico Home Sites is who I use. I called forever trying to get the best one, and that has been the best one for us. I don't know about everybody else, but for what we have covered. But anyway... Let me see where we're at. Uh, hey, Duncan, how are you doing? Well, congratulations, you two. I think I've seen your wedding photo before, too, of you two, if I'm not mistaken. I think you're cutting a piece of cake or something in some of your photos I've seen of you. Well, 
Well, congrats, Duncan. Congrats. 500 members, huh? And 14,000. I'm not, I have people complain or they're, they're talking about, um, I'm not selling. Let me, let me put this out there too. I don't know how many times I've got to explain. We use the zero quantity option in site preferences on eBay. None of our items will show up in sold listings unless I want them to show up in sold listings. Um, just FYI. So if you try to find items that I'm showing sold, you got to look in Terapeak after I think 90 days, I think is when they pop up. Maybe they're in Terapeak sooner, but the point of it is you can't look at the details on them that way. Um, so again, I use zero quantity. So when an item sells any of my items in the stores uh, that I share with you, it goes to zero, but stays active. It does not roll into sold listings ever. And if you want to make sure it doesn't show up where someone can see what you've sold, you delete them instead of ending them. See, I can end them even though it's a zero quantity. I can still end that listing. It is active with zero quantity because of that setting. It's at the very top of site preferences. Now, be careful if you're going to use that because it does set off some other things if you want to keep track of your information. I keep track of my own sold, my own sold history by the titles and the prices on an Excel spreadsheet. So I don't really care if it shows up in eBay's whole year's worth of data. It also shows up on WorthPoint as well, too. But you can't look up what I sold. Um, there's no way that you can get a, and again, it has nothing to do with me trying to hide it. It has to do with third-party apps who can't end a listing and instead have the option to end or to zero out the quantity. When you bridge your store across multiple platforms, again, we were doing Inkfrog, Shopify, and a couple other things. Some, some of the apps can end an item and some cannot. The only way to avoid issues and to still be able to link up certain things to your account is to set it as zero quantity. Now people do use that to stop people from seeing quantity and things that they're selling so that they won't get as much competition. That's what it was made for originally. But that happened before third party was around. So anyway, that's what I use it for. Just FYI, that was something I wrote down because it really was getting to be annoying. Everybody telling me and you're not selling anything. But yeah, I just don't show my ended listings for a technical reason. It's not hiding. I show the items in my what sold videos though. But uh, Yeah, I definitely remember your video there, Eduardo, as well. Yeah, we bin up everything just like that, too. Basically the same. I may not go in as much detail as you, um, but you've got a different setup. I know you've got, oh my gosh, Eduardo has a massive amount of, let's say, I guess, toy pieces, parts, and he sells replacement parts and pieces. He's got a massive amount. I don't think I've seen an assortment as big as he's got ever. Um, but anyway... Um... We're going to end it in just a minute here. I know I'm running late, as I always try not to, but I, I just yap too much. Uh, toy parts can get tricky with, yeah, variants. Yeah, that's exactly, again, it depends on your, your specifics. I can understand Eduardo's, uh, my feed just bopped all over. I can understand Eduardo's um, change on his. Heather Reynolds, how are you doing? I think I got there. Well, thank you, Pamela Saban. Thank you very kindly. Little guy was six months. Well, that's kind of cute. Uh, Colorado Steelers, do you see Facebook Marketplace taking the place? Never, never, never. Not going to happen. Facebook Marketplace is the Wild West. There's no rules. People sell just junk. At least around here, I would never use, use it to buy anything like that. Um, I don't see that at all. Facebook is in no way structured at all. At least not in the near five or ten years down the road. I just can't see that happening at all. There's, there's, it's, it's like night and day. Totally wrong structure. Nobody's going to be going to Facebook from what I see. The antique guys, the people, the, what I sell would not work on Facebook. I just can't see it. I could see conceivably eBay having some issues and losing more more um, ground to other sites, but I don't see the, the vintage collectible side going away on eBay. I would just, from what I would think, they would probably 
just have a vintage site if anything ever would would to be happened that drastic but i don't see that going anywhere any at least in five years and that's what my my projection plans are with ebay you know i've got a five-year breakdown at this point ebay is less than half of my business way less that actually i hate to say it but it's their own fault it's not like i'm taking stuff off the site or anything but there's i just list stuff on other sites now because i get more money than i do on ebay it just depends on the draw for the specific stuff uh, I picked bluegrass on the mandolin and guitar. Had a good name until everyone asks. Oh, geez. I got you with the bluegrass picker. That makes sense. There used to be, when we were in Mississippi, there was a bluegrass festival that we've been to once or twice. I'm talking the old-timey bluegrass, too. It reminded me of being at, um, like, you know, Brother Where Out Thou when he's at the end and his his girls are singing on the stage. It was like It's like that kind of place. Really friendly and down-to-earth people, too. It was really neat. Uriah Kaiser, well, thank you as well. Shoe Bayer, it's always playable on repeat. Oh, uh, where are we at? Uh, where am I? I think I lost them. Bluegrass picker, yeah, I probably will, but um, I lost dairy two years ago. Um, I was, I was bitten by a uh, poisonous spider. I don't know, seven eight years ago, and ever since then I had some liver and um, some other issues, internal organs that were damaged, and I actually have a massive scar. I I turned necrotic, and um, I was bedridden for a couple weeks. Um, more than a couple weeks, uh, two months, I couldn't do anything, but. End of the result is I've got some internal organ issues that have plagued me ever since, and um, my body doesn't produce certain things anymore because of it, and it's been getting to be more and more. I lost dairy two years ago, and it's really hard to find something to eat when you love cheese. I hate to say it, but then cereal, I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm going to go crazy. It's what I'm going to do, but oh well. Uh, Craig's in the house, Landshark Picker, another good channel, a friend of the show too. Um, let me slide down just a little bit. We'll just take, I'll try and find one more question if I'm not lost on my feedback. Where are we at? Uh, hang on. Just trying to get one more question. Uh, Tyler, could you do a video on how to describe certain items? Because I think that what I have the worst trouble with is my keywords. Um, I've got, I don't, not trying to gear somebody towards Patreon, but I talk about keywords in Patreon and I've done some where I, I post a sheet of 10 different images and I, I have you, uh, a sheet where you can like write your own keywords to kind of get it from there. And then I do a video explaining the keywords and what the item is and go into more aspects of it from there. Um, keywords are huge. Uh, that's, that's keywords are super huge. Literally one single word added to a title can get something sold. I see it all the time. I, literally all the time. Literally today, I put something in a title and it's sold immediately. Um, again, I go through, we check a lot of things. If you're having sales issues and you've done everything else, go back in and check your titles. Keywords, now, I, I wouldn't be so pushy and say that's what you need to do except that ebay keeps changing the logarithm and with the item specifics now it's more important than ever to get the correct keywords in the title to make sure that your your search result the buyer the potential buyer search re result goes to your item your item is going to show up because again with some of the search results depending on a keyword used the search result is going to be narrowed, forcibly narrowed by eBay so that the potential buyer is only seeing very specific items in a very specific category. I think they should stop it. That's a terrible thing. I know Amazon's done it for years. Amazon's at least is more intuitive and does give you mostly what you want in the top uh, of the search results. Their, their search criteria, their logarithm is 10 times better than eBay's in my book um, from what I've seen. Again, I, I use Amazon a lot um, for various other... We've got a, a business-to-business -business B2B account with them. I've got a homemade, and we've got a whole bunch of other... There's Amazon... You can tie in like four... We've got four other accounts, Amazon business accounts tied into that one that each do something different. The business-to-business -business has been one of the most interesting where you can buy wholesale from a business to you and you can get breaks and stuff like that. 
you got to do some stuff to get into it, but at least I, I, at least I would imagine you can still get into it if, if you're not. But uh, anyway, um, keywords, keywords, keywords. I hate to break down on all of, I don't know, I, I some information I don't like to shell out on YouTube, not to be, not trying to, for the money aspect, but more so that I don't want everybody narrowing in on certain things because then it will kill some some inner secrets to to keywording i guess was the point um again i can't tell everybody everything and you know anyway let me just hit one more and then we'll go from there think about the weight loss okay let me pop down moonstone mamas yeah i did have a ribeye the other day which reports do I give my accountant? This will be the last one for George Fernandez. Well, firstly, everything that I get from eBay goes on a spreadsheet. Everything. And those spreadsheets are what I send to my accountant. Now, he's got a file and it's got attachments for all the eBay stuff, but I put it all together for him. Now, I know accountant would usually do that, but I like to see my own numbers. Um, I would never recommend someone just giving everything to the accountant and hoping the accountant is right. I know what to look for and I know every single line in my entire P&L. P&L is a profit and loss statement. That is basically what my accountant gets. Obviously, I've got to give them the the 1098s and all that kind of stuff too, but the 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 federal documents they get. The eBay stuff, I'll give them a copy of my uh, sales which includes my sales tax printed off of eBay. I give them the the payout sheet, whether it's from PayPal or not. And the one thing most people don't even do is I give them the reconciliation sheet, which shows all the chargebacks and money that was paid back out. The 1099 miscellaneous that you get that you get that says all the money that's changed hands from a third party that eBay sends out does not include any credits or anything else or any money that was paid back out. So don't that that total is is not what you have to come up with. That's not that's not that's not how it works because the total includes things that you're not responsible for, such as sales tax, and you know, shipping costs, cogs, and all that kind of stuff too. Um, again, basically, it's just my P and L is what goes to my accountant. If he has a question, he just drops me an email. That's it. You know, um, he does have access, instant access to to that. Um, they're using another, hang on, let me, now this I know because I just got a statement from my accountant. One second here, I'll give you an app that most accountants seem to be using these days. It's a share, it's just for sharing. It's Canopy, I don't, K-A-N-O-P-Y. Um, it's like a share service. So I can give my uh, accountant stuff and he posts all the stuff onto there as well too. So it just goes up on Canopy. But uh, he uses my P&L for, for that. And I have two accountants. One does payroll, and then one does my, my um, income tax. Just FYI. The, each, the one's a specialist for payroll, and it's cheaper that way because my guy who does the taxes is only a tax guy, basically, but he does do payroll. He charges more for the payroll because it's not his forte, and he doesn't have all the fancy stuff. So one goes to one, and one goes to another. So anyway, I'm going to let it off at there. Um, glad that the show ran fairly well. Hopefully everybody got some good information from that also. If you enjoyed the show, please leave a thumbs up down there at the bottom. That would be greatly appreciated. It does help boost the feedback for the show. Again, I hope everybody had a good evening. Hopefully you're doing well. Hopefully sales are working out and everybody is staying safe. But we're going to end it off on that and hope you have a good evening.